It's good to see you today. It is March 18th. Our reading today comes from, we're still in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 21. It's kind of a hodgepodge today. I'll try to go through and just look at a look at sort of an overview quickly. But our reading today begins in chapter 21, verse 10. And with each one of these, I, and I do hope you're reading them, and, and what you see in each of these, you see another facet of God's goodness. For example, here it's talking about marrying female captives. And if that happened, if they if they took someone to be their wife, they were to allow them a time to mourn for their family that it looks like may have been killed. And that you see the Lord's, I think you see the Lord's mercy there and thoughtfulness. Uh, like I said, though, it's kind of a hodgepodge today. The next paragraph is about inheritance rights of the firstborn. If you have two wives, one's loved, the other's unloved. You might think about Jacob, Rachel, Leah, that account, which of course happened long before this, but hopefully you see the application. You don't get to pick if the firstborn son was of the unloved wife. Uh, you didn't get to play favorites. You can read about that. Anyway, rebellious son, we know how that was supposed to be handled. Kill him. Hanged on a tree. Cursed is every man who hangs on a tree. We know how that's um, quoted in the New Testament. Chapter 22 in reference to Jesus. Chapter 22, again, various laws. We're going to come back. We're going to read one of these. If you see your neighbor's animal and he's gotten out of his paddock, you need to go and get that animal and hang on to it until you see your neighbor. Anyway, different different various laws versus, let's see, 9 through, 9 through 11, kind of talking about, for example, you shall not plow with an ox and donkey together, equally yoked, laws concerning sexual immorality, and those things were going to be judged if a newlywed, if she was a virgin or not a virgin, proofs of that, such things as that. Read about that. Chapter 23, those excluded from the assembly. He who is emasculated. That usually comes into play. Uh, where that's usually referenced is in the account of the Ethiopian eunuch. Because the question is, how far could he go when he went into Jerusalem? Anyway, this is the passage that talks about such things as that. You shall not abhor an Edomite. He is your brother. The Edomites were from Jacob and Esau. Esau's side. Uncleanliness in the camp. Again, nature of God. At the same time, some of these things, you read them and it just sort of makes you chuckle. Namely, here, and someone pointed this out to me recently, uh, you shall have a place outside the camp where you may go out. You're going to have an implement among your equipment. When you sit down outside, you shall dig with it, turn and cover your, ref your refuse. For the Lord your God walks in the midst of the camp. Namely, when you go outside of the camp to do your business, or when you, <laughs> when you, when you do that, dig a hole, cover it up, Lord doesn't want to see none of that. Uh, miscellaneous laws that are given, that's also interesting. I would encourage you to read that and think about, in the New Testament, I think it's Onesimus. Did he really have to go back? Uh, read that chapter, or that paragraph. Okay, come on to chapter 24. Laws concerning a divorce. Verse 4. Because, okay, if you have a situation where you're, you give your wife a certificate of divorce, verse 1, you send her out. She departs, she becomes another man's wife. If that husband detests her and gives her a certificate of divorce, they were not allowed to take their... The husband was not to take her back. You might think about that. So that should cause you to think a little more seriously about, you sure you want to put her away? Because once you put her away, you can't take her back. Next passage talks about if you're a newlywed husband, you don't have to go out when the army goes to war for one year. Stay home. Enjoy the wife of your youth. And let's see, some of the other passages, we're going to come back and look at one or two of these. Don't glean your fields. Leave them for those who are less fortunate. Chapter 25, if there's a dispute... Talking about judgment, and if it was a matter that just was not um, was not worthy of death, but there was a certain number of blows, no more than forty. More laws concerning marriage, and with this, it's 
if your brother dies, you, you were commanded to take his wife so that his name would not be cut off. And if you didn't do that, shame on you. Miscellaneous laws being given again. And we'll come back and we'll read one of those. Anyway, okay. Let's back up to chapter 22. Like I said, kind of a hodgepodge today. When you build a new house, then you shall make a parapet for your roof, that you may not bring guilt of bloodshed on your household if anyone falls from it. So the idea is, think about good protection. And you don't want to cause others to stumble. You don't want to cause others to be defiled. You don't want to, out of negligence, even negligence, you know, when people will say, well, oh, well, if you, <laughs> it's, it's a handrail. And sometimes people look at handrails and, well, if you're, if you're so dumb that you just fall off my roof, well, that's on you. Get over yourself. And we need to, to be more protective. We need to be protective, not be proud. And that's when you make, when you build a roof, well, this is going to add cost to the, okay, but be protective. Back to the account. And it's just like I said, I know it's a hodgepodge today. You'll make a parapet for your roof. I think other, ver other translations, let's see what they are. King James, I think, uses the word battlement for thy roof. Um, but anyway, it's the idea of you need to build something to keep someone from falling off the roof. Okay, now let's look in chapter 24. Miscellaneous laws, verse 19. When you reap your harvest in the field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, the widow. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. And you shall remember that you are a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. And what it is, is we need to have a generous hand. And you see that throughout these passages. It talks about if your servant, and that if you have it in your hand to pay him, you pay him. Pay him today. He needs it. He's depending upon it. The fatherless and the widow, the poor. Be generous. Be protective. That's our first point. First point. Be protective, but also be generous. And, you know, it's, this is the same, same chapters talk about don't charge usury to your brethren. Be generous. Be content. Be content. Don't be... There's another passage in here that talks about if you're in your neighbor's field and that they were allowed to, I think it references both grain and grapes. Okay, you're in your field, you're in their field. It's okay to eat grapes from their vineyard while you're, you know, it's the idea of traveling. Like when the disciples were traveling and they were, they were shucking the grain with their hands. That's, that's okay. But it also says, don't take a container. So it's the idea of it's okay if you're on a journey and you're you're hungry, it's okay. That's that's why they are not stripping the fields bare. Now don't overdo it. Be content. Don't take a container. That's stealing. <laughs> that's stealing. But be generous. I'll, I'll make allowances for this. The next point I wanted to make to get back over there. Look over in chapter twenty five at verse thirteen. You shall not have you shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light. You shall not have in your house differing measures, large and small. You shall have a perfect and just weight. And I was just thinking with these three points about what we find at home, that we should have good protection, and we should have a generous hand, and we should have accurate scales, namely be fair. Be fair to others. Don't try to take advantage. Don't don't be unfair. That shows a lot of different issues. But have an accurate scale. Be fair and just. Good judgment. 
such things as that. Hope this study has been helpful for you. Appreciate you following along with us. Hope you're having a good day, and I hope you join us for our next study.